Hey guys, thanks for joining me today. In this video, we're going to be going over the ellipse selection tool, and it's located right here on your toolbox. If you'll notice the tool options down here between the rectangle select tool and the ellipse select tool are very similar. In fact, the only difference is that the rectangle select tool has rounded corners. So let's get started. First, we're going to open up a file that I have shared with you. I'm going to go to File, Open. We're going to choose Soccer Grass, hit Open. And what we're going to do is we are going to cut this, this soccer ball out, and we're going to paste it onto another image. But the way we're going to do it is we're going to use the Ellipse Selection tool to easily create a selection that encompasses this ball. So the first thing we're going to do is zoom in. So control and mouse wheel zooms this in. There's a couple of different ways you can make your selection. You can just kind of freehand it. And then after you freehand it, you can grab onto these things. These are called handles. And you can manipulate these handles all the way around the ball. And you can just kind of hope that you get it just right. And it's not really hard, but just can be time consuming sometimes. And you can do something similar to that. The other option you can do is um, you can click and drag to an inv from an invisible point. So if you extend an invisible point that's that goes um, horizontal straight over and you imagine there's another vertical line that goes straight up right here the point that they intersect is going to be your starting point when you click and drag now if you're in a hurry that's a good method just kind of eyeball it click and drag and you see that you get pretty close okay I wasn't very good but I'm sure you guys will do better the other thing you can do and what I like to do if I want to be precise is I click and drag my ruler down and what it does is it gives me a guide so I can set a guide there and I can set a guide here so now I don't have to imagine and now I can actually see the guide and I can see the point so I click the ellipse select tool my starting point is this crosshair right here where they intersect then I click and drag and there we go now of course mine still isn't perfect and it could be because this ball isn't perfect perfectly circular but that's okay this is close enough so let's go ahead and just use it as is so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna cut this out and we're gonna use it on a different image so there's a couple different ways you can do that you can either go to edit cut or you can press control X on your keyboard if you're using a PC on Mac you press command X and you can cut that image right out um, the other option if you don't actually want to remove it if you just want to use the selection somewhere else but you don't want to actually remove the soccer ball from your image well I'm gonna press control Z and instead of cutting I'm just gonna copy so essentially it has the same effect for my for my other image but in this image it preserves this soccer ball here so we're just gonna use copy the next thing we want to do is open up the other image and this is gonna be the image that we're gonna paste it onto so if I go to open I'm gonna start a new project in GIMP if I go to open as layers it's actually gonna open over here in this layers panel and I'll have my new picture as a layer and I'll have this soccer ball picture as a layer and that's fine when we get into layers but we're not getting into layers so much right now so for now we're just gonna start a new project by pressing open we're gonna go to window one now these are the these are the shared files that I made for you guys and here's the image you know, you're gonna zoom in so I'm just gonna click anywhere on the image and then I can hold control and use my mouse wheel zoom in I can click my mouse wheel in like a button and I can pan around I've already showed you guys how to do that in previous videos 
So now we've got to find a place to put it. Well, if we just hit Control and V on our keyboard, it will paste it. Or you can go to Edit and Paste. And you'll notice it's just kind of hanging out here. Well, I'm going to go to the Move tool. And so I can move the soccer ball wherever I want it to be. I'm just going to set it down here on the floor. I know it doesn't look natural there. That's fine. That's not the point of this video right now. So now to anchor this to our image, we can either click somewhere outside here. You notice that there's an anchor icon next to my mouse cursor. The other thing I can do is come over here to the layers panel and I can click anchor right there. Or I can go up to the floating selection, which is what I've just pasted, and I can right click it and go to anchor. So I'm going to do that now. And so now it's anchored. It's all part of the same image. It's no longer separate. So that's using the ellipse tool to cut some, cut an object out of anywhere really on an image. It doesn't really even have to be an object. If you just want a pattern that's in an ellipse shape, you can do that too. And that's how you basically use the ellipse tool to do that. So I'm going to show you a couple of other things that you may not have known that the ellipse tool can do. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the rectangle selection tool and we're going to make a selection like so. And now we're actually going to go to the ellipse tool. And what I want to point out to you guys is that the selection is in no way whatsoever connected to the tool that created it. What does that mean? It means it doesn't matter how I get the selection, doesn't matter how I create it, doesn't matter what shape it's in. If it's there, if it's dotted lines, if it's ex if it exists, then I can use uh, any of these other selection tools to add to it, subtract from it, or manipulate it in any kind of way. So I'm going to show you that now. So I've created this rectangle with a rectangle tool, but now I'm going to use the ellipse tool and I'm going to change my um, mode to add to the current selection. And what I want to do is I'm just going to create my circle over here. And I say circle because I'm going to hold shift. And you'll notice that that little checkbox where it says fixed aspect ratio is checked when I hold shift. It'll uncheck when I let go of shift. Just like with the rectangle tool. In fact, the aspect ratio means it's going to use this field right here. Make sure it says one to one if you want a perfect circle. If you don't want a perfect circle, if you want maybe a two to one ratio, now when I click and drag and I hold shift, now I have a two to one ratio that's locked. You see that? So I'm going to go back to one to one because I want a perfect circle. And I'm actually going to control Z and undo those two um, trial ellipses that I, uh, that I just created. So we're going to do it one more time. Click and drag, holding shift. Now I have a perfect circle. And there's my selection. If I click and drag this, now look at this. I can add it like so to my selection. So when I click inside and then outside, now you can see the entire selection has been redrawn to include the circle. So all I've done is add to a selection that I've created with another tool. I can also do it to selections that I've created with the ellipse tool. It doesn't really matter. Or I can create them right here on the fly without dragging them on top. I can just simply create it and now it's here. So it's kind of like a little boxcar shape, okay? I'm just imagining uh, what this uh, that the shape could be that I'm creating with these boxes and circles. So let's go to the next mode, um, subtract from the from the current selection. So let's say we wanted to make a couple of windows or something. Well, I'm actually going to remove these from the selection, just like that. 
Now you're looking at that and you're saying, okay, well, I can't really tell what's a selection and what's not. Everything is moving. There's a bunch of circles. There's a lot of dotted lines, a lot of marching ants. Well, how do I tell? You have to pay attention to what mode you are on. But also, if I choose this paintbrush tool and I color, you'll notice that I can only color my selected area and I cannot color where I remove the selection. Um, I also wanted to point out that the selection is completely independent of the tool that made it. So now that you guys are aware of that, I'm going to hold control and press Z and I'm going to undo all that coloring. And let's go to the final mode, which is the intersect. So if I make a circle here, the only spots that are that are going to be left as a selection are where they intersect with the new ellipse. Okay, so I let go. And now I have a selection that includes the new ellipse and the old boxcar shape but only where they intersected. A lot of this is going to be review because I talked about a lot of this with the rectangle select tool. Feathering edges, same rule applies. The expanding from center, same thing. Find a center point, click and drag. You can do any aspect ratio you want until you hold shift and then it has to be forced. Just like the rectangle tool. Um, same thing, you can pick an exact size, you can pick starting points, you can pick uh, the size down here, you can still highlight your selection like before. Anyway guys, I hope this helped and I will see you guys on the next video.